Today is July 28th, and I worked with a couple of different stocks today. One is a swing. I'm not going to go into that because it's kind of still a work in progress. I have taken profits on it, but I'll talk about the day trade that I took today. I took three trades on one stock, TBLT. This is a continuation stock. I've been working with this a little bit on and off over the course of, I don't know, a week or so. I had some news. And so I came in around 6.30 this morning, right around here. Well, maybe a little bit after somewhere around here. And I saw this stock right away. Um, and because I'm familiar with it, I've worked with it very recently. I, I'm familiar with how it moves. And, stuff. and so I had lines on here already from my previous trades with it. So I just went ahead and I saw, hey, here we are on this candle. When I sat down, I thought, well, I'll, I'll get in as soon as I can. I got in on this candle at $4.84. And I took that trade because there was room to this line. It was, these were big candles. It wasn't going to take very long, but there was room to this line. And this line was at $5.24. I actually got out at $5.29. So I made 45 cents on that quick little trade that only took like three or four minutes. First thing right out of the gate. So, you know, having your lines on your chart kind of saves you a little bit of time. That was really nice. Then, then what I did was I took this trade and I'm just going to go through these trades. And then I want to talk about what I look for, right? What was my buy signal? Yeah, I do have some indicators on here that help, but I like to confirm visually with other things that I, I use, you know, visual patterns that I look for, candle structure and stuff. So anyway, the second trade, it, I knew it was going to be basically just a scalp because I was just going to try to take it to this line. And you can see I drew this line a little bit lighter color than the others because it's not a daily level. It's not going to be a strong level, but it will be a level nonetheless. It's an important level. And so I thought, well, you know, it may even push right through it. But you know what? It didn't even hit it on this little move. So I got a little frustrated. I got in at, what did I say I got in? I got in at $5.39. I got out, I wanted to get out at five seventy, dollars which was right around, right at the top of this wick, but I couldn't fill right there. It barely tagged it and it hit my target. You know, this line's a little above. I went a little below, tried to get there, but I ended up getting out at $4.65. So I made a total of 26 cents a share on that little trade. It only took a couple of minutes, but so then I continued to watch. There was nothing else on the scanners. So here we have, I got in here and I'll talk about these entries and how I knew. Um, but you know, I'm looking at everything's above view up and I'm looking at my targets. I had this line that I knew was going to be a target. And I had this line that I felt like it, it probably will go to, and that will be resistance. I had all my trade plans out very early, way before I did anything before. I take a trade, I tell people, hey, I'm going to do this. So, so they had the information ahead of time. So here we are. Everything's getting very compressed here above VWAP. And that's usually a really good sign. And the volume was there. So I was encouraged. I actually got in on this last trade at around $5.55, which was this candle, basically the top of this candle. I got in before the buy signal. Had I waited for this, I probably would have got in at $5.62. So I would have lost like 10 cents a share. But I got in on this one and um, I knew my target. I felt like it was going to go through this. I was watching this line just to see how it reacted. And yeah, it reacted to it and it kind of reacted to it, but it held all the lines. The lines were still pointing up, you know, these dashed lines. So I thought, well, I'm going to ride it to my target. All the candles are holding the lines beautifully. Um, they're staying above everything. So I'm just going to go to my target. So I actually got out above this white line, which was my target. I got out at $6 and 34 cents and I made 79 cents per share on that trade. These three trades combined gave me a total of $1.50 per share. Not a bad thing. So let me talk about what I'm looking for. On this one, this first trade, why did I get in there? Was that my typical buy signal? No, I actually missed the buy signal, but I, there's no way I would have seen that. This thing just started ringing on the scanner. I had my lines. So I bought because there was room to the target. I actually had 45 cents to the target. So that's plenty of room. I knew it was going to be fast because these candles are strong candles. So I knew it was going to not take very long. And this next trade, what did I look for here? On this is a pullback. I knew once it hits a target, it's going to pull back. So what I'm looking for here is holding support. We have these you know, small candles and they're solid. That means they're selling, coming down to support. They held this nine EMA, which is the light blue dashed line, right? Tail to the nine. I look for that, you know, that means it's holding. This one actually continued to sell down to my white line. That is really a strong signal for me right there. Plus I had a buy signal. It bounced off of my previous target line. Mm -hmm. So that's why I got in. I was a little delayed. I got in on this next candle because I do like to wait for a, a, a hollow candle, not a solid candle. I like to wait for a hollow candle. So that's why I got in here. So again, my signal is after hitting a target, this white line is the target, right? 
got out after my target, I always expect a pullback after hitting a target. There's going to be a pullback. And what I look for is for it to hold support. Yes, it kind of broke through the tail, but broke through this nine, which is this light blue dash line. See how the tail broke through here. It touched it here. It broke through, but what did it go to? It went to my white line. So had I done either one of those, you know, the nine and then gave me a, a a hollow candle, which is a buyer candle. These solid ones are seller candles, even though they're green, they're seller candles. So I wait for a buyer candle after proving a support level. This is a confirmation. So that's why I got in here. Okay. So I don't sit and look at patterns other than candle structure and how it's holding support. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I knew where my target was going to be. You've got to know your target. The way I draw targets is completely on like a, a daily chart and a four hour chart. I'm looking for major major levels, right? And I draw these lines way ahead of time before I get in. I have to know what's my range. Does the risk reward ratio make sense to me? So this one, you know, this was just a scalp and there's nothing wrong with scalping, but I knew what I was doing. I wasn't just winging it. Okay. So the next one here, we had, it hit a target or came very close to it. And then it came down and what did it do? It compressed. What's it, what is this compression that you see here? This is holding support. This, um, solid, blue light blue line this is basically a 20 it's a dynamic 20 ema it's not really like other people's 20 ema it's a little different but it works for me right so um it held that level very very well then i got a buy signal but i actually got in before the buy signal because i had a pop right here above all these lines i was let me zoom in so you can see this pop this pop above all my lines so i cut in on that candle and i said okay i'm going to monitor through this i'm going to see how it holds this or what it does with this line, not hold, because I haven't got there yet, but how it reacts to this line. And you can see it, it pierced it and it was a little sluggish at it, but it was holding these other lines, you know, these dash lines and stuff. It was holding my EMA. So my target line, yes, price recognized that it wasn't really a target line. It was previously, but knowing this is a weaker one, that's why I have it a lighter color. Knowing that this is a weaker line, I just monitor how candles are dealing with it. And they, they rode on top of all of my lines right here. Do you see how they're just holding above all the lines? So I just stayed with it to this next level. And again, you know, I had this level above that, you know, this level was $6 and 23 cents, this dollar six sixty five. You know, I, I felt like this is a more important level than this. It would probably go to that, but it's going to, this is going to be serious resistance when it gets there. So I just thought I'll get out, you know, above here or whatever it does. Cause I felt like it was going to push to that. And I didn't want to take a chance waiting till, till it gets to that. Cause they don't always, <laughs> you don't always fill right there. So, and so I got out here and what did it do? Yeah. It went to this line. It actually hit my alert. I replaced the alert so you could see it. What's it going to do after it hits a white line? It's going to sell down, right? It's going to sell down to major support. So that's what it's doing here. It found the VWAP. It fell below the 20. It's sort of dealing with the 20 and the VWAP here. Um, and then it retagged this level. What did it do here? It proved this as resistance now. Okay. And I expected that. So that this white line, once it's been a target, it's now going to be resistance. See how it's resistance again. And here it, it's struggling with it. It's not even reaching it, right? It's, it's looking at these previous levels here over here. And that's becoming people's targets from the dip. Right. So, um, I didn't buy here. This is usually a really nice little entry to try to get it back to your previous target, but I didn't do that. It was, you know, below VWAP and all that stuff, but that would have been a nice little move, like another maybe 30 cent move. But I just did these three and I was able to do, um, a dollar 50 per share doing that. And I did it mostly before opening bell. So, so anyway, that was today's trades. I hope this was helpful to you. I will continue to provide you with the targets like I have been doing and the stocks that will be profitable for you to trade. And I'll help you with your buy signals, right? Uh, I'll do that. I'm not going to tell you when to buy live because I can't officially, I can't do that. Legally, I can't do that because I am not a fiduciary. I can't do that. Um, but I can educate you and I can give you opinions and I can help you with these lines. And then it's just a matter of me teaching you, educating you on how to react and what to look for in terms of a buy signal, because sometimes there's false buy signals, right? These indicators, if you've worked with them for any length of time, like here's one, <laughs> here's an example of a, would you buy the, this is a buy signal, right? But look what it did. It chopped. I mean, you would have probably gotten in up here then you would have been in the red and then you would have been right back where you started from. And now look what it's done. So 
sometimes these buy signals are crappy. Um, you can't rely on them. But the way I read the charts, you can trust them. So that's what I'm going to work with you. Continue to reinforce that um, for you and teach you you know, buy signals and provide you with these targets that are going to be dead on every time. Okay. All right. I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any questions, let me know and we will talk soon.